The interview itself. Finally, we're going to talk about the interview itself. Uh, first of all, remember the interviewer's objectives. I'm going to say it one more time. Do they like you? Are you a producer? Are you likely to accept their offer and come to work for them and stay for the long term if they, if they make you an offer? Those are the things they care about. Those are the things you ought to, be, ought to care about as you uh, go through the interview process. When you're interviewing, uh, be yourself. Uh, it's not going to do you any good to try to be the person who you think the interviewer wishes you would be. Uh, you need to be yourself and sell yourself. That's what you're trying to get done. If you fake, if you try to be somebody else, you're not going to be able to carry it off very long or probably very well. So just be yourself. Be, of course, the very best presentation of yourself that you can possibly be. Be yourself. You're there to have a conversation. Be pleasant, talkative, have a nice conversation. Um, what you're there for and what the interviewer is there for, remember I said you're both buyers and sellers, and you are. You're having a conversation. It should be pleasant. Both of you should leave that conversation thinking that you were delighted to meet the other person. Uh, and you sure did have a nice, pleasant, comfortable conversation. That's what you want to make happen in the interview. What questions should you expect in an interview? Your resume is going to be the roadmap for your interview. Um, the interviewer has your resume. The interview probably the interview should have read your resume and probably made some notes on it before the interview. Why, why is that? Well, an interviewer is expected to have read the resume. It's just a matter of uh, style and grace. That's what people do. Um, for that reason, though, since the roadmap or the, inter the resume will be the roadmap, make sure you are ready to answer questions about anything that is in your resume. That goes for courses that you've listed, that goes for jobs that you've listed, that goes for activities that you've listed. Uh, if you have listed hobbies and interests, which is fine, a lot of many people do it in their resumes, you need to be ready to talk about those hobbies and interests and, and don't list hobbies and interests that you don't really mean. If you don't know anything about football, don't say that football is one of your hobbies. Uh, if you haven't read a book lately, don't put down that reading is a hobby. If, read, if you've said reading is one of your interests and hobbies, you probably better be ready to talk about the last two or three books you've read. I think you get the message. Um, the resume will be the roadmap, though. They'll also ask questions to gauge your interest in the firm. This goes to the third part of what they're interested in that I've said two or three times already. Uh, you will get questions in your interview, maybe from every one of the interviewers, as to why it is that you're interested in the firm and why it is that you're interested in the city where the firm is located. Uh, you're going to get tired of this question as you go through the, your interview day. Um, but you need to be ready to answer it, and you need to answer it consistently. Uh, if you're from New York and you're interviewing in the city of Atlanta and you've never done anything other than public interest work and that shows in your resume, uh, you're going to get questions about all those things. Why is it you want to live in Atlanta if you were born and raised in New York? Uh, why is it, is it that you want to work at a for-profit law firm if all you've ever done is nonprofit stuff and, and work for the people? Uh, you need to be able to answer those kinds of questions, they'll come up. A few interviewers will be more purposeful. Uh, they'll try to get at whether you're the kind of worker that they want to hire for that firm. If, if you're interviewing at a law firm, which you will be, 
uh, so there will be a few interviewers who will try to determine in the conversation and with the questions that they ask whether you're hardworking, whether you're a leader, whether you're inquisitive, whether you have finished the job, whether you are going to do whatever it takes to find the answer, whether you get along with other people, uh, whether you have high emotional intelligence, whether you're an independent thinker. All those kinds of things, you can make a list a mile long of the kinds of characteristics that uh, would be appropriate from the point of view of a lawyer who's hiring a new associate. Um, and they may ask questions to try to get at those things. If they do, answer them honestly. Answer them in a way that's likely to reflect the best on you. And uh, you're going to do fine. What about questions you should ask? Um, it's just a fact of life that when you have interviews, the interviewers are going to, at some point, find a way to inquire of you whether you have questions of them. Uh, most of the time that, or many times that happens at the end of the, in, toward the end of the interview. What questions do you have about our firm? How, what questions do you have about what we do? Um, you need to have some questions. I'm going to say that again. You need to have some questions because they're going to expect you to have some questions about the firm. If they, if they inquire of you, do you have any questions about our firm, and you say, no, that's not going to go over too well. So you need to have some. Uh, and you can ask the same questions of several interviewers. There's nothing wrong with that. That'll be pretty much expected and uh, not a problem of any kind. So you don't have to have a million questions. But you do have to have some good questions to ask the people who you're interviewing with, uh, whether or not you ask the same questions of the same interviewers, which you may. Again, you may do that. Um, <clears throat> my thinking on that is that you sh should ask sort of open questions that any lawyer in the firm would be able to answer or would have some thoughts about. Uh, what makes this firm different from others its size? That's a pretty typical question, frankly, but it's not an unfair question. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's a good, open-ended question. Every lawyer in the firm will have some ideas about that. Uh, how would you describe the firm's culture? People have different ideas about that, and it's something that, is, that you are and should be interested in as I've mentioned before in, in these remarks. Uh, has the firm changed since you've been here? Or has it changed in the last 15 years, if you're talking to somebody who's been there for 30 or 35? Uh, but that's an important thing for you to know, and it's an easy question for people to answer. What changes would you expect in the firm over the next 15 years? That's also a question people ought to have a good idea about, and it's something they can talk about easily, and it's something that you would be good for you to know about and to hear about uh, from different people, because different people there will have different ideas. Those are some thoughts. Another one, what was the highlight of your practice at the three-year, the five-year, the ten-year mark? Uh, what sorts of, what things do, associates in this firm do or young people in this firm do after they've been here for two or three years? What do they do after they've been here for five or seven or ten years? Something you'd like to know and it's a, it's something, it's a question that wouldn't be unexpected. Again, uh, open-ended questions, questions that people can answer and that they'll have ideas about. Uh, there are questions that you shouldn't ask too. Don't ask questions about partner compensation. That is an absolute no-no. Uh, when I say absolute no-no, some, some partners might not be put off, but I can almost guarantee you if you're interviewing with six or seven or eight people, two or three of the partners will be put off by that because it's just sort of not something you ask about when you're trying to get a job at that firm. 
you should not ask questions that have an obvious answer on the firm's website, circling back to what I said before, that you should read the rev website and know what's there before your interview. If you ask questions that, are, that have answers on the website, particularly if they're sort of obvious, uh, it'll be obvious that you haven't read the website or studied it, and that's going to be something that sort of counts against you in the interview day. Uh, questions about politics, religion, and social issues. Uh, I would say ask those at your peril. Uh, some people might be interested in it and have be interested in a lively converse, conversation on the subject. Other people will not be interested or will be offended and think that that's not something that they should be engaged about and won't work too well. Um, some common pitfalls in interviews other than the matter of questions. Um, be careful to avoid being perceived as snobbish or arrogant. That is really important. Uh, I can't tell you how many people I've seen who did not get jobs at law firms, or at least at my law firm, when they were perceived as, as being arrogant. If you are perceived that way, that word is going to end up on the evaluation reports that get sent in and collected up and looked at, and it's going to be hard to get over. So uh, how shall I say, if you, if you have a tendency to be arrogant or snobbish, mask it that day and instead be a little more humble and decent. Uh, if going to dinner or going to lunch is part of the interview day, uh, by way of common pitfalls, order something that's going to be easy to eat and that you can eat with a fork and not drip it on your tie or on your blouse. Uh, Again, this is something that I've seen happen, and it's, uh, it, it might seem funny. It seems a little funny to me as I think about it, but it's not funny when it actually happens. It's embarrassing, and it can even result in more than just embarrassment. Certainly, I know this goes without saying, don't drink too much. If you're going out to dinner and people have a glass of wine, that's fine. Order one if, if you drink. If you, or a drinker, if you're not a teetotaler. Have a glass of wine, there's nothing in the world wrong with that, but sip it. Uh, whatever you do, don't get tipsy at dinner. It doesn't play well. As much as you may think that it's really good when it's happening, it's not. Guarantee you it's not. Uh, order a glass of wine or order a beer. Don't order a martini and then a second martini. It'll be the worst thing you could possibly do. Uh, it should also go, out, go without saying that you shouldn't use uh, salty language in an interview. Uh, some, I will tell you that some people do it. Some people even do it to the extreme. It doesn't play well, and it won't uh, inure to your benefit. It will inure to your detriment. So don't do it. 